Here we have a KVM module for a 2021 Range Rover Discovery that came in for an MCU Virgin chip replacement. The customer is a locksmith and he said that he's not able to program a key for that vehicle because of a KVM lock located on that chip. So he brought us another chip. He wants it installed, soldered on the board. He's going to reprogram that chip and reprogram a key for that vehicle. He said, if you were to take this to Range Rover to do it for you, it's about $4,000 for all of you who want to buy Range Rovers. He knows best. I do not know about the prices, but that's what he told me. Now, one thing I can tell you about the board is I hate working on those boards because of the coat that you see on the board. You see that shiny coat? makes it very difficult to solder or desolder components of the board. I worked on similar boards before, vehicle boards, where when I applied hot air to the board, everything smoked like crazy. I do not know how it's going to be like on this one, but I did tell the customer there's a chance that we may not work on the board. If it's going to smoke, I do not want my store to be filled with smoke. So we'll see. Let's take a look at the board. And that's the coat I'm telling you about, that shiny coat. I'm thinking instead of applying hot air to remove that chip and expose all the coat on that board to heat, maybe we can apply low melt solder onto the pins and desolder the chip that way. But for the sake of trying, why not try hot air first and see how it goes? That's a very expensive board and you need to have a heart of steel to work on such a board. Because if you damage it, <laughs> the customer is going to pay a lot of money to get one from Range Rover. We're going to have to be careful. And to be honest, I'm kind of nervous applying hot air to that board. I mean, that coat is changing colors right as we speak. I applied just a tiny bit of hot air. And look at this. You now see a brown spot. I only applied a tiny bit of hot air. So I do not think that I'm going to go that route and I already smell the smoke, that weird smell. The coat is melting down and the same smell that happened when I worked on a similar board where everything just suddenly smoked. I'm not going to apply hot air. We're going to have to do it the safe way and the healthy way, the organic way. Let me turn my fume extractor on and let's go the low melt solder way. Because right now applying hot air, by applying hot air we are exposing the whole board to heat. And the site is not going to be good after we are done desoldering the chip because everything is going to look brown. And the customer is going to look at the board and say, what's all that brown stuff? Did you burn my board? I still smell that burnt smells like burnt plastic this cannot be good it cannot be healthy no way i do have my fume extractor on but still you cannot escape all the smell that smell is intense when the customer first came in i told him that we're not going to work on it but he insisted and he's an old customer that always comes in with stuff like that since maybe five years ago. I mean, look at this. Solder is not even making a connection with the pins because of that nasty coat on the board.
Oh yeah, it looks like Lomel Salder did its job. The pins are loose. Very nice. Let's move that ball right over here. No, 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 no. Not over here. Over here. boy what I like about the solder ball is it listens to me right now we're gonna move it right over here from over the chip And you have to be slick with those techniques. You have to know how to move that solder ball from over the chip, from under the chip, from between the pins, juggle with it, behind your neck, under your legs, and then out. Do the job and out. One more time. And then we're going to attempt to desolder the chip. We just want to soak those pins with low melt solder. Let's grab Papa Tip right here. And Papa Tip is going to absorb that solder ball like no other. Now, one thing we forgot to do is check the alignment on the chip. I cannot read any letters on that chip. Now we have to know where pin number one is and how the chip is aligned because we do not have any indicators on the board. So if I just remove that chip, we're not going to know how to align the other chip. Should pin number one be here? Should it be here? Should it be here? Should it be here? I cannot read a thing. We're going to try our empty glare light and see if we are able to read anything. But as of now, I cannot read the thing. Okay. I can read BD right here. Let me look at the new chip. Do we have a BD on that chip? Yes, we do. So the chip, the dot here should be here. All right. So we have BD and we have BD right here. So pin number one should be on the bottom. Let's put a dot here. That's pin number one. Whatever that arrow means. I do not even know what that arrow means, but I just put it there. It's pointing the wrong direction, but who cares? I do weird stuff sometimes. Let's apply hot air right now and see if we are able to remove that chip. Are we going to be able to remove it with just minimal heat? It looks like that chip did not even flinch. Oh boy. Yeah. That chip is not going anywhere. Now look at how it turned all brown. I'm not able to remove that chip even with low melt solder. Look at this. Now look at the smoke. You can already see some of the smoke. And that coat, it turns brown quick. We're going to have to apply heat again, maybe just to show you the struggles of replacing that chip. What can we do? Look, the pins are loose, but the center under is what's giving us a hard time. 
The chip is loose. You know what? Let me grab a BGA blade. And maybe we can just go under that chip. Oh, right there, right there, right there. See? Think outside the box. Think outside the box, right? That chip was glued, or that's an underfill from the coat that they applied on top. It went under the chip and The thing is, if that chip is not flat on the board, then it's going to be hard to solder the pins. So we need to clean it. We're going to charge the customer a bill to replace that chip. A bill for the risk factor and a bill for my health. And I can tell you one thing, the reason I like to work for this customer is he's very generous. He's one of those customers that I like working for. Are we all good? Yep, I think so. Everything looks flat to me. And we need to pay attention to the corners also. And the tool I'm using, you can purchase off our site. Just look up BGA tools. And you can buy all your tools from our site. We are a distributor of original Amtec Flux. You can buy in retail or wholesale from our site. You can buy everything that you need from hot air station, soldering station, thermal camera, power supply, voltage injection tool, grinding pan, tweezers, braid wick, Whatever we use on our bench here is sold in our shop for the most part. Just log in to northridgefix.com, click on shop, add whatever you need to cart, check out pay, and we almost always ship out same day. For all of you who have purchased from us before, you know how fast we ship. Almost always same day. We test all the tools that we sell or we use them on our bench here. So buy with your eyes closed. Now, where is that mark I put, the arrow? Right here. And in case I forgot, I can go back to the video, right? There's always plan B. Right now, two ways to solder that chip. We can pre-apply solder and reflow that chip down in place. And I think we're gonna go that route even though we're gonna apply hot air. But it's not gonna be as much hot air as when dealing with unleaded solder. We're gonna be applying leaded solder and we should be able to reflow that chip down in place. The other way of doing it is to solder it pin by pin. Drag soldering, not a big deal. We can do it either way. Now, if I feel that applying hot air onto that chip to reflow it down the place is gonna be a problem, then we will just go back to doing it pin by pin. We always have 
more than one option to solder a component. 101 ways to skin a cat. Now we're going to use the NF.mini pen to apply solder onto those pins or pads. And we're going to drag solder, right? Just like that. Beautiful. The amazing NF.mini pen. If you have not already bought one, just log into our site. Search for NF.mini. NF stands for Northwich Fix. And that's one great tool. Wow. I've been using this very same tip for the past maybe six months, seven months. And it still works like new. Amazing. Let's apply a fresh layer of solder. Look at how solder grabs onto the tip. That's one high quality tip. Now we're going to go over this one more time just to make sure that we have enough solder on all the pins even though we already did apply solder to all the pins or the pads. I keep saying pins. But let's go over it one more time, quick. And we're going to solder this chip better than factory, like always. Just notice how no two pins are bridging, and that's because of high quality flux. Original Amtec flux, one of the best flux in the market. Look at how consistent that flux is. Just imagine yourself using cheap flux, then you have to reapply flux, and then you have bridges, and then you have to clear the bridges, and then you rip pads off. Just because you do not have good flux, you end up with a big mess. Now we're going to grab that chip. And again, where's pin number one? Pin number one is right here. That's the virgin chip. And pin number one is going to align with the mark that we have on the board. We're going to align it and then apply hot air. Now let's go ahead and see if we can reflow that chip. It doesn't have to be perfectly aligned now. Once solder melts on the pads, then we can move that chip down in place. But let me just use my anti-glare light so we can see better. Let's do it like that. You see with the anti-glare light, we got rid of reflections. Awesome. Let's go ahead and clean up. Then we're going to test all the pins, make sure they are solid. The way I see it, all the pins are perfectly aligned. But we're going to have to check pin by pin. Then if everything is good, we're going to call the customer to come and pick up tomorrow. Let's start from here. Look at the way the pins are solid. Nice. Just tell me that's not better than factory, right? Solid, solid, solid. And how about I say solid for every pin on this chip? What do you think? Wow. Every pin is making a very solid connection. Wow, amazing. Every pen on this side, that's what I meant. Now we're gonna check here. And look at how we do not have any bridges between the pins. Again, good flux. We're gonna have to fix this one here. We'll do it later. And let's check this side. 
Solid, solid, solid. Look at those pins. Look at those pins. Not even a single one bridging or loose. Not even a single one. That's why those customers with big soccer balls, they come here. Because they know that we have hearts of steel to work on a job like this. We have a loose pin here, right? Right here. This guy wanna play games, that's okay. We are up to it. And this guy is loose. What's going on? So we have one, two, and three. Let's take care of this now because those are the only three loose pins on the board. Did we check all three corners or? I'll go over this corner just in case. And that's how we would solder pin by pin. Using the NF dot mini pen, one of the most amazing pens that you can lay your hands on. It's amazing and awesome for tiny jobs like this. Just look at the precision on the tip. I mean, since we're making this side look like a mirror, why not do the rest? Just fly through it. But of course, we're gonna have to apply flux unless we are asking for trouble. And just tell me that you can do this with your normal soldering iron. You cannot. We have to zoom in further here to make sure that we do not have a bridge. And what's going on here? Oh, I see. I see what's going on. The pin is actually shifting to the left. We have to push it to the right. This one here. Right, let's check on that pin and make sure it's good. The pin was probably bent to begin with and we did not see it before, but that's okay. We straightened out the pin and we are all good. I'm gonna go over the pins one more time just to check up on them, make sure everything is good, but we have one more side left to do. This guy right here. And we're done. Now we can say that we are done. Grab a swab, some alcohol, clean up. And then we're gonna go over the pins one more time, one last time. And then we're gonna call it off for this video. Let's go ahead and test the pins, pin by pin. Make sure all the pins are solid, we do not have bridges. Very nice. Very nice. And finally. Wow. Now the question is, what would you do if you found out that you soldered the chip the wrong way? That's the question. Let me know. Leave it down in the comments. I mean, the obvious answer is you would do the job again. That's the obvious answer. But the trick is not to use bad language.
the chip is soldered right here with some nice brown around the chip. What can you do? We're going to call the customer to come and pick up. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think. Leave it down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll do something else in the next video.